Per dad's request, brought her housekeeper along. What? I was momentarily taken aback. Robert, in front of his father-in-law Daniel, arrogantly refers to me as the housekeeper. And as father-in-law Daniel looks at me, he suddenly, Ha! Ah! Bursts out laughing. Em, what's the matter? I ask, and Daniel, trying to contain his laughter, says, Well, it's just... Hearing you were Robert's fiancé, I imagined someone. Well, this is a face of poverty. Would love to see your parents' faces. Feeling humiliated, I teared up and ran away from there. Luckily, there was a guest bathroom in the party room. I hid there and called my dad. After I explained the situation, dad came right away. Hello, the housekeeper's dad here. Oh, you are. Upon realizing who my dad was, Daniel and Robert began to panic. And they would soon face retribution from dad and another helper who showed up later. My name is Sarah, and I work as a salesperson in a department store. At 40, I'm still single. But currently, I'm dating someone. His name is Robert, five years my junior at 35. Dating the son of the owner of a music store that has a shop in the department store. Where I work does attract attention? That's why I kept my relationship with Robert a secret at work to avoid awkward situations. Our communication is mainly through messages. I always look forward to checking my mobile phone for messages from Robert during breaks. Today, I checked my phone. Let's go on a date on the weekend. And saw an invitation. Being in a fresh relationship, our time together was always exciting. Robert's house has a $1 million piano, as expected from someone who runs a music store. Robert has been learning piano since he was a child. I want you to see our piano at home. Then, I'll play something for you. That sounds wonderful. I'd love to hear you play. Robert is really a well-mannered, calm person. I enjoyed my time with him. Considering our ages, of course, marriage is on the horizon. That's when I received a date invitation from Robert. But I had to decline because my mom was visiting that day. Sorry, I have to be home because my mom is coming over. Then, ten minutes later, Robert replied. Sarah's mom is coming? I'd love to meet her if possible. After some thought. Considering we were in a serious relationship, I decided it wasn't a bad idea to introduce him to my parents. I quickly agreed. That sounds good. I was thinking of introducing you to my parents eventually. I'll come pick you up in the morning. Really? That's great. I'm looking forward to it. Robert was happy about the prospect of meeting my mom. However, introducing Robert to mom began to cast a shadow over our relationship. On the day Robert was to meet mom, I went to pick him up in the morning. Today, since mom came by car, there wasn't space for Robert to park if he came by car as well. Plus, I thought it would be nice to have a drink together if the conversation went well. So, Robert came by bus today. Getting off the bus, Robert was dressed in a brand new suit. Perhaps freshly bought, appearing slightly nervous. I cheerfully greeted him to ease his nerves. Good morning, Robert. What's with the nerves? Good morning. I guess I'm just nervous about meeting your parents. Robert said with a tense voice, his face stiff. Don't worry. My mom is very friendly. As I said that, Robert gradually relaxed. Entering our condominium, mom greeted Robert with a smile. As soon as Robert caught mom's eye, he hastily greeted her. Hello, I'm dating Sarah. My name is Robert Miller. Miller? The moment Robert introduced himself, the smile vanished from mom's face. Indeed, I hadn't yet mentioned Robert's last name to mom. But why did mom react so strangely to Robert's last name? 
Mom, what's wrong? Oh, nothing dear. Nice to meet you, Robert. I'm Sarah's mom. She always speaks so highly of you. Mom greeted him with a straight face, her words sounding superficial. Even after we moved to the living room, there was a palpable tension in the air. With her back turned, Mom asked Robert. What do you do, Robert? I help out at my dad's company. We own five music stores in the area, including the one in Sarah's department store. Robert answered confidently, seeming to return to his usual self. However, Mom didn't seem very interested in Robert's story. Trying to smooth things over, I asked Mom. Mom, don't you think Robert's company has something to do with us? Eh? Yes, I suppose. Mom responded, still indifferent. Unaware of Mom's demeanor, Robert seemed tense. A connection? I haven't mentioned this yet, but Mom is a violinist who graduated from a conservatory and now runs a violin school at home. Really? Then there definitely seems to be a connection. Robert's eyes lit up as he said this. I was about to mention Dad too, but stopped as I sensed Mom's mood darkening. What bothered me was Mom's skeptical looks at Robert. Even though Robert was nervous, he began to notice Mom's dubious expressions. Just as I was about to break the ice, Mom turned to Robert and said, I'm sorry, but could you please leave for today? Eh? But he just got here. I was surprised at Mom's request, and Robert seemed uncomfortable. As he slowly stood up, Robert replied, Understood. I'm sorry for intruding on your mother-daughter time. Though he said so, Robert's face showed displeasure. I intended to walk him to the bus stop but was stopped at the door. It's okay. I'll go back alone. Robert, I'm really sorry. Even as I apologized, Robert left without turning back. What exactly did Mom dislike about him? Curious, I immediately returned to the living room. Mom, what's the matter? What didn't you like about Robert? I pressed Mom for answers as she was cleaning up in the kitchen. Mom turned around with a serious look and said, I think Robert is a good person. Then why? As I was about to ask more, Mom looked at me earnestly and whispered, It's hard for me to say this, but I can't support this marriage. Why? Because I'm five years older? No, that's not it. Mom calmed me down with her response. Can you listen to what I'm about to say until the end? It might be hard for you, Sarah. Sitting on the living room sofa, I listened as Mom explained why she couldn't support my marriage to Robert. It was more serious than I had anticipated, leaving me with mixed feelings. I understood why Mom couldn't support it. But my desire to marry Robert remained unshaken. I understand how you feel, Mom. But I don't dislike Robert himself. It's not his fault. I want to see for myself. That meant I was also willing to meet Robert's parents. Mom looked worried but said, I'm worried, but if you're that determined, I can't stop you. I believe in you, so do your best. Thank you, Mom. And then, I pleaded with Robert to meet his parents as well. Robert, seeming to have had the same intention, wore a happy smile. Really? Wow, after meeting your mom, I thought she didn't like me. Robert said, then pulled something from his pocket. It was an engagement ring. Before anything else, let's get this conversation done with. Will you marry me? Blushing at the sudden proposal. I had been waiting for Robert's proposal and without hesitation. Yes. I replied. And finally, the day came to visit Robert's home. I was nervous today. Robert came to pick me up in the morning, looking happy. You don't have to be so nervous. My dad is very approachable. Um, yeah. 
In fact, Robert's family was just him and his dad, as his mom was not around, a single father and son household. Entering a household of men, I was somewhat prepared to become a female contributor, taking care of their domestic needs. When we arrived at Robert's house, I was taken aback. It was my first time visiting Robert's house, and it was much larger than I had imagined. I knew Daniel was a president of a company, but I had not expected him to be this wealthy. There was a large, mansion-like gate in front of the house, like something out of a movie. Inside, we were shown the $1 million piano in a spacious party room. It's amazing. To have space like this in your house, it's like you could host a dinner show. Right? We often invite our valued customers here for parties. Actually, we're planning to host a party tomorrow with a famous pianist. A famous pianist? I remembered something when Robert mentioned that. And just as Robert was about to answer my question, a man in his early 60s, with the air of wealth about him, appeared before me. Ah, thank you for coming. I'm Robert's dad. Ah, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. I said, greeting Daniel deeply. Then, Robert, with an enthusiasm I hadn't seen before, said, Sarah, you don't have to be so nervous. He seemed to be trying to ease my tension, but it felt oddly out of place. As soon as Robert looked at Daniel, he blurted out something outrageous. Just as you wished, I brought our housekeeper. What? I couldn't believe it. Robert, who had always respected me for being older, was arrogantly calling me a housekeeper in front of Daniel. Ah, that's really helpful. After all, our household has been all men for so long. Having a housekeeper would really be a relief. Daniel joined in, looking intently at my face. Then suddenly, ha! Ah! He burst out laughing. Um, what's the matter? I asked, and Daniel, trying to contain his laughter, said, Well, it's just... Hearing you were Robert's fiancé, I wondered what kind of woman you'd be. This is a poverty-stricken face. I'd love to see your parents' faces. I thought this joke was going too far. I looked at Robert for help. But Robert was smirking too. Well, Dad. A woman isn't all about her face. Plus, if she's a housekeeper, it's better to have someone who's a bit older than me, who can work hard. Oh, by the way, wasn't Sarah's mom beautiful? Maybe she takes after her dad? What's that supposed to mean? Are you making fun of my face too, Robert? I was shocked by the unexpected turn of events. The kind Robert the first knew. It was hard to believe he could change so much at home. As I glared at Robert, offended, Daniel asked me. Oh, your mom is beautiful, is she? I'm looking forward to meeting her. By the way, what does Sarah's dad do for a living? Come to think of it, I haven't asked yet. Daniel and Robert looked down on me with disdain. I didn't want to talk about my dad to such people. My dad is, well, he's always flying around for work, very busy. As I declared this, Robert smirked and retorted. Really? So, your mom teaches some instrument, and your dad travels around for work? Sounds like a busy poor family. So, a dual-income couple so busy they hardly have time off together must be pretty poor. Finally, this father and son duo had started looking down not just on me, but on my entire family. I ran away from there, tears welling up in my eyes. Luckily, there was a women's restroom in the party room. I hid there and called my dad, knowing he was nearby due to his work. Ah, dad! Hey, Sarah. What's up, calling in the middle of the day? Dad answered the phone cheerfully. His voice bright despite his busy schedule flying around the world for work. Hearing Dad's voice after so long, I couldn't stop my tears. Dad. I. Hearing my tearful voice, 
Dad spoke kindly. It sounds like something tough happened. Take your time and tell me about it. I was so grateful for Dad's kindness, I told him everything that had just happened. I don't care what they say about me. But to speak so terribly about my family. I was so upset. After I finished, Dad said in a serious tone. I see. Stay right there. I'm on my way to you. Eh? What about your work? My daughter's trouble is more important. Work can always be paused, don't worry. Knowing Dad was coming made me feel relieved. Thank you, Dad. You know how to get to the Millers, right? Ah, of course. Dad said and then hung up. I wiped away my tears and returned to where Robert and Daniel were chatting casually. Look who's back, Sarah. Thought you'd left. Too bad. Since Robert's dad wanted to see my parents so badly, I've called my dad over, as you wished. At my words, Daniel sneered. Calling him over in broad daylight, he must be really free. A dull dad like Sarah, huh? This will be interesting. Daniel and Robert mocked, as if laughing at me. But I was no longer afraid of their taunts. Seeing Dad would surely shock Daniel. About ten minutes later, Dad arrived. The doorbell rang, and Robert went to answer the door. After greeting Dad, Robert came back looking stunned. That guy is Sarah's dad? He's super rich. I looked towards the entrance where Dad was. Indeed, he was dressed in a fancy formal suit. Probably for a rehearsal for tomorrow. However, Daniel, disbelieving Robert's words, retorted. What are you surprised about, Robert? A dad coming to his daughter's fiancé's house will try to look good. He must have borrowed that suit from somewhere. What are you talking about, dad? He came in a luxury car that's hard to get. No one just lends those out. Daniel grimaced and looked skeptical at Robert's words. Then, Dad appeared and greeted Daniel. Hello, the housekeeper's dad here. Seeing Dad, Daniel dropped his wine glass to the floor in shock. Ah, you are! Daniel stared at Dad, astonished. Dad looked around the house. Oh my, such a large house and not a single servant? So, you wanted Sarah, Robert's fiancé, to be your housekeeper? No, that's not, absolutely not. Daniel denied it hastily, waving his hands. Dad, observing Daniel's panicked reaction, said, Oh? Was the story I heard from Sarah over the phone a misunderstanding? Something about Sarah having a poor face, resembling me, her dad. No, that's, well. Daniel was sweating, struggling to respond. Robert, sensing the seriousness, asked Daniel apprehensively. Dad, who exactly is this person? What's going on? Hey! Watch your tone! This gentleman is Thomas, a famous first-class pianist who will perform at our important party for valued customers tomorrow. At Daniel's words, Robert too was surprised. Really? Hey, Sarah. Why didn't you tell me? I was just as surprised when Robert mentioned a famous pianist coming here. I knew Dad was going to perform at a party tomorrow, but I had no idea it was this house. Robert shook his head vigorously in response to my answer. That's not it. I'm asking why you kept it a secret that your dad is Thomas. Well, Robert you always talk about yourself. I never got the chance to mention my own story. Thinking about it, Robert always did seem to boast about himself. Whenever I tried to share something, he would quickly turn the conversation back to himself. Besides, after the way you insulted me earlier, I was even less inclined to talk about my dad. All you do is blame others for your problems. Robert was angry, putting the blame on others. 
Daniel too snapped at me. Sarah, even if you are a famous pianist's daughter, isn't it common sense to mention your parents' professions before visiting your fiancé's home? Thinking about it, he might have a point. I was at a loss for words. Then, as if to rescue me, Dad intervened. Well, that may be true. But then, Mr. Miller, are you saying you intended to treat her as a housekeeper, as you mentioned earlier, if she wasn't my daughter? Dad was not to be outdone. Daniel was left speechless by the question. Seeing Daniel's confused expression, Dad said with a laugh, Well, no matter the intention, it's clear that after marriage, the household chores would inevitably fall on her. And what do you mean by that? Dad looked around the house and said, Rumor has it that no housekeeper stays here long. They leave because the master is difficult to please, and the son tries to woo the young housekeepers. Indeed, the mansion was large, but not a single servant or housekeeper was in sight. The party room had been cleaned, probably in preparation for tomorrow, but the rest of the house was noticeably dirty. I looked at Robert, trying to confirm his feelings once more. Robert, did you really decide to marry me with the intention of making me a housekeeper? I truly loved you. Robert just looked down, silent, then murmured after a while. I had no choice. No choice? So, any housekeeper would have done, not just me? Robert wouldn't meet my eyes. Seeing this, Dad spoke sternly. So, you didn't truly love Sarah. In that case, we'll consider this engagement dissolved. Eh? Wait, please! Robert was taken aback, but Dad seemed firm in his decision. There's no need to wait. Furthermore, Mr. Miller, given the circumstances, I'll also withdraw from tomorrow's performance. Eh? But that's a separate matter. What am I supposed to tell our important guests if Thomas doesn't perform? Daniel started to panic. That's not my concern. If piano is needed, let your son play. I hear he's quite skilled. My Robert's piano playing is not something I can present to our distinguished guests. Please, I understand you're upset about Robert, but... Daniel apologized deeply, sitting down. As Daniel pleaded, Robert shouted, Dad, stop making me out to be the villain. After all, it's Dad's fault for overworking Mom and driving her away. And then, for giving the housekeepers impossible tasks and driving them away too. Robert, be quiet. If tomorrow's guests abandon us, our company is finished. As the father and son argued, a loud bang came from the back. Robert is right. Daniel, you're the worst for making your wife Linda suffer. Emerging from the shadows was none other than mom. Oh, you were here? I rushed over after you called. It was easy to sneak in without a gatekeeper. So, dad had immediately contacted mom after my call. Their teamwork was impressive. Mom glared at Daniel, who looked startled by her gaze. Ah, you are. If you remember, good. Daniel, you overworked my best friend Linda to the brink, then tried to discard her. I knew from mom that Linda, who had been mistreated and driven away by Daniel, was her college friend. That's why mom opposed my marriage to Robert. Mom glared at Daniel fiercely. After Daniel drove her away, Linda came to me. She joined the same orchestra and continued playing the violin. She was top of her class in college. Now, she works as an instructor at my violin school. Linda is doing that. Daniel hasn't changed a bit. He treated Linda like a servant because she looked plain, never recognizing her true worth. Struggling for an excuse, Daniel said, I knew Linda was a conservatory graduate, but once we were married, I expected her to follow our ways. 
I was astounded by Daniel's pathetic excuse. Their way had left the house without a single domestic helper. No wonder any wife would want to leave such a household. Especially when the head of a music store wasted a talented violinist's potential. Really, what does the Miller family think a wife is? Let me tell you, Sarah might not have pursued music, but she chose her path independently, always exploring her potential without needing to follow in our footsteps. Mom's plea was met with Dad's approving nod. I was touched to see my parents understood me. I felt lonely with both parents touring for music. As a student, I declared, I don't want to be like them. But that was just my rebellion. Yet, they always believed in and watched over me. Realizing their feelings anew, I couldn't stop crying. Daniel had no comeback for Mom's words. Listening beside, Robert knelt and started crying. I can't take this anymore. I don't need to get married, just let me go home. It's all Dad's fault, not mine, right? Robert wanted to end the conversation quickly. However, Daniel, not ready to give up, said to Robert. Robert, what are you saying now? If Robert and Sarah's marriage falls through, tomorrow's reception is ruined. Instead of that, why don't you ask Thomas to play the piano tomorrow? Still prioritizing his company, Dad looked at Daniel disapprovingly. Mr. Miller, even now, you're only thinking of your own interests. I was willing to perform tomorrow if I saw any remorse from you. But now, I firmly refuse. Eh? That, no. Daniel seemed utterly deflated, having shot himself in the foot. Then mom added insult to injury by confronting Daniel. Daniel. You haven't even paid the alimony from your divorce with Linda, have you? Linda has been struggling for 30 years since your divorce. So, you will be paying her the alimony you owe for the divorce trial. Faced with mom's demand, Daniel turned pale. That's... With tomorrow's event ruined, our company is finished. And now, to pay alimony for the divorce trial on top of that is too much. Oh? That's not all. Mom said this and turned to Robert with a sly smile. Hey, you ineffectual son. Me? Robert, looking foolish, glanced around. Who else? Although not officially engaged, Robert, you've deeply hurt Sarah's heart. You must pay her damages for breach of promise to marry. Eh? No, the house's finances are all managed by Dad, so please ask him. Robert really was just as Mom described, an ineffectual son. But Daniel was shaking his head, refusing to take responsibility. Robert, that's your problem. Sort out your own damages for breach of promise to marry. That's impossible. It's all your fault for putting me through this mess. The pathetic argument between father and son continued. The spectacle was so ridiculous that my parents and I couldn't help but laugh loudly. It was a relief to have seen the true colors of this family before marrying into it. I was filled with gratitude towards my parents for their help. The next day, the Miller family hosted their party for valued customers as planned. However, with Dad's piano performance cancelled, the guests, understandably upset, left early. Without its key supporters, Miller Music's management began to falter. Apparently, Daniel's reputation had been bad for a while, and the company was barely getting by with support from valued customers. Losing its main pillar, bankruptcy was just a matter of time. Working at a department store that housed one of their shops, I unavoidably heard about it. Soon after, Miller Music went bankrupt. But the story didn't end there. Unhappy with our claims for compensation, Robert and his father refused to pay. Thus, my parents and I sued Daniel. At the trial, Daniel also announced that he would sue Dad. 
In response, Daniel also threatened to sue Dad for canceling the job on personal grounds. But Dad gracefully accepted the lawsuit. I apologize for canceling the job due to personal reasons. I'll pay the compensation. So, Mr. Miller, please also proceed with your payment. I see, so that's what it was. This move seemed to corner Daniel, making it hard for him to refuse our claims. Eventually, Daniel begrudgingly paid Linda the divorce compensation, and I received damages for breach of promise to marry from Robert. Following their bankruptcy, Robert and Daniel had to sell their house and the $1 million piano. The two disappeared from public view, losing everything. Later, there were sightings of Robert working as a cleaner at hotel party venues at night. However, it is said that both of them were working as cleaners during the night when no one was around. This experience made me resolve to reconsider my life. I had often ejected the idea. It's good that your parents are great people. Proud of my independence, I wanted to distance myself from their shadow. However, I now realized the true value of having wonderful parents. I decided to attend Dad's concerts, something I had never done before. Today was Dad's birthday concert. Mom and I were there to enjoy Dad's performance. Hearing Dad's piano live for the first time in years warmed my heart. I felt incredibly lucky to have such a wonderful dad. Mom too seemed to enjoy the music. A moment of peaceful contentment. I was thankful to be born to these parents and vowed to do my best to show my gratitude from now on. Listening to dad's music, I made that promise to myself. Tiana is getting married. Come to the wedding. After moving out from Derek and Tiana's place, who had harassed me for 10 years, and living alone in my new home, I got a message from him for the first time in five years. As I was shocked and confused by the news, someone revealed to me a surprising fact. Hearing that, I was trembling with anger and decided to take revenge on Derek and Tiana. I will never forgive them. I'll make them pay. I started planning my revenge and immediately set about executing it. My name is Lindsay. 55 years old. I married Derek after meeting him through a marriage consulting agency. Soon, it will be 10 years since we became husband and wife. These 10 years have been like living in hell for me. Derek and I both had children from previous relationships, he had a daughter, and I had a son. At that time, I was 45 years old, working as an office worker at a factory, while visiting the marriage consulting agency. Derek was 35 years old, a company employee. His daughter, Tiana, was 15 years old and in the 8th grade when we remarried. My son, Frederick, was 25 years old and working as a professional. Frederick has a gentle nature and has been looking after me more than anyone else since his father passed away, supporting me by my side. He landed a job at a major brokerage firm, a one-hour drive each way from our home. I thought it would be tough for him to commute every day and suggested he live on his own. However, Frederick stubbornly refused my suggestion. If I leave home, what will you do, Mom? If something happens when you're alone, there won't be anyone around to help you. Since losing his father, Frederick has become very worried about me. Certainly, the loss of his father must have connected to a strong anxiety within him. I couldn't keep him tied to our home because of me. I had to start thinking about a new way of life and decided to look for a partner to remarry. That's how I met Derek. Having both been through similar struggles with stepchildren, we got along well. I thought we could support each other and live together, but reality was not so sweet. The first six months after marrying Derek, our relationship was good. Tiana was friendly and made an effort to build a relationship with me. Seeing their attitude, Frederick felt relieved, and starting with Tiana's promotion to the next grade, he began to consider living on his own. I was worried about what would happen to mom, but both of them are good people, and I've been thinking maybe it's time for me to start living on my own. I can't stay at my parents' house forever, and I've got a girlfriend now. I want to make sure I give her and our time together the attention it deserves. Seeing Frederick's shy smile made me smile with surprise and joy. I think Frederick has been holding back on dating because of me. 
but if my marriage to Derek is pushing him to move forward, nothing could make me happier. He sacrificed so much of his life for me, I just want him to be happy. I don't want him to feel any less because of me. With all my heart, I decided to support Frederick's independence. However, Derek was opposed to this. What? Frederick is starting to live on his own? That's out of the question. Who do you think is going to cover the rent, high heating bills, and living expenses now? I couldn't believe these words when I heard them because I thought Derek would agree. Derek was, in fact, relying on Frederick's money. Frederick had been contributing tens of thousands of dollars to our household expenses since it was just the two of us. I'm working and at an age where I should be living on my own, right? So, it's only natural that I contribute to the household expenses while I'm still living at home. He said this as he took on a portion of the rent, utilities, and some living expenses every month. But we could cover those expenses as a couple. I never thought it was Frederick's duty to bear the cost of living. That's why Derek's attitude surprised me. From his words and tone, he was treating Frederick like a cash cow. You don't earn much from your part-time job, and if Frederick leaves, my burden will only increase. Stop it. I don't make that much salary to begin with. Can't you somehow persuade Frederick to stay? It's impossible for me to take care of you and Tiana alone. This was the first time I felt annoyed at Derek who was complaining while lazily taking off his tie, possibly tired from work. When I remarried Derek, I quit my factory job. His place was far from where I worked. It wasn't possible to make Tiana, who was preparing for exams, do all the household chores, and I had to take on the primary role. So, I resigned from my full-time job upon marrying and joined a creative cuisine restaurant nearby as a part-time employee. Together, we could support Tiana and make a living. However, Derek complained about his increasing burden and was not willing to accept Frederick living on his own. Unable to bear it any longer, I cut off his complaints. Then, if I increase my work hours and earn more, you won't have any complaints, right? Keeping Frederick at home was never an option for me. It's unthinkable to have a young, working parent be burdened with taking care of me. Even if I were unable to work, I have no intention of becoming a mother who troubles her son we should take care of our own affairs. If money is the issue, I'll earn it myself. Thinking this, I glared at Derek with determination, and he started to mock me with a sneer. It's fine if you want to earn more, but can you still manage the household chores as before? I'm working full-time, and Tiana is in high school. I won't forgive you if you start relying on us. We don't have any time for household chores. If you can perfectly manage both work and home and earn the money that Frederick was covering, I don't mind letting him move out. But, if you fail even once, I'll forcibly bring Frederick back. Got it? Derek's words felt like a threat, but I nodded without submitting to him. If I can manage, Frederick won't be burdened. Then, I should just do it. I couldn't stay silent after being provoked like that. My competitive nature made me take on Derek's challenge. And after Frederick left, I faced hellish days both physically and mentally. In addition to the living expenses Frederick used to pay, Tiana's advancement increased the household chores, like making sandwiches for lunch and washing uniforms for club activities. I thought Tiana would choose a literary club since she wanted to become a fashion designer, but she joined the volleyball team unexpectedly. Her food intake suddenly increased, the household chores more than doubled, and the burden kept growing. Hey, why does this fabric softener smell different? I told you, use this one for my clothes, and this one for the uniforms. Tiana became very particular after reaching the ninth grade. Becoming a regular in the volleyball team as a ninth grader, Tiana grew stricter and often took out her stress on me, making it a daily occurrence. I'm sorry. I'll be more careful next time. You're really useless. I think I preferred the other mom. She frequently brought up Derek's ex-wife, who had cheated and left, and was very critical about her lunches. Using frozen food would result in being yelled at, and at times, she refused to eat it altogether. Reaching my limit, I discussed this with Derek. However, Derek, as if waiting for this moment, began to threaten me with a smug smile, bringing Frederick into the conversation. You haven't forgotten, have you? If you can't handle the household chores, I'll bring Frederick back. 
Tiana is a teenage girl. It's natural for her to develop strong preferences. Imagine if she gets ridiculed by her friends for having lunches full of frozen food. What if she stops going to school because of that? Can you take responsibility? She's working hard and has become a regular on her team. If your actions lead Tiana to drop out of school, I won't forgive you. But, I have a job too, and a little help wouldn't hurt. No. If your job is an excuse for neglecting household chores, then bring Frederick back to cover the finances. If you reduce your workload, there won't be any problems, right? You made that promise, so stick to it. If you can't, then talk to Frederick about coming back. Period. Threatened with the prospect of Frederick being brought back for any issue. I found myself in a situation where I couldn't even think of enduring this life without someone to consult. I had reached my limit. I wished I could just disappear from this world. It was then that I was. Worn out both mentally and physically, and ended up fainting at work. It's great that you work hard, but she's clearly too pale. Everyone's worried. Is something going on at home? If the job is too much, just say so. We don't want you overworking. We can adjust your work hours as much as needed. After collapsing from exhaustion, I was allowed to rest in the break room at the office. While crying over my chosen path and feeling ashamed, the concerned owner, Jameson, approached me, and I couldn't help but sob. Hearing the commotion, other colleagues and staff came to check on me, concerned. Yet, I couldn't share my home situation with anyone. I was afraid of being judged. Frederick had left home, feeling secure because I had remarried. If I talked about what was happening, he might suggest divorce. Some might advise me to ask Frederick to come back. But doing that would mean burdening Frederick unnecessarily, taking away his freedom. I didn't want that. I didn't want to cause him any more trouble because of me. That's why I couldn't talk about Derek and the rest. I wanted to say it, but I couldn't. Living with this dilemma, I continued living like this for 10 years. Even after graduating high school, Tiana didn't leave home and went to a vocational school for fashion design. She studied there for two years and then got a job at an apparel maker. The harassment towards me continued, now including complaints about my clothes, hairstyle, and makeup. Mom, you really have no taste in fashion. The outfit you wore to my entrance ceremony was especially bad. I got mocked by my friends later. Considering you're the mother of a daughter aiming to be a fashion designer, can't you try to be a bit more stylish? That's why dad doesn't see you as a woman anymore. Tiana mocked me, and those days of being ridiculed continued. Yet, I couldn't retaliate and only endured. After Frederick left, Derek never spent time as a couple, regardless of whether I managed the household expenses or perfected household chores. Life felt more like that of a housekeeper than a family member. As Tiana said, he hadn't treated me as a woman at all in these 10 years. I've reached my limit. I hate this life. I want to escape right now. Having reached my limit, I begged Derek and Tiana for a separation. Separation? Don't joke around. Who's going to do the household chores? Yeah, I'm busy with work, and Dad's too caught up with overtime to do chores. There's no way you can leave this house. I'm not a maid. My patience snapped at their selfish arguments, and I screamed hysterically. For these 10 years, I've lived like a slave. I'm sick of it. I have my own life too. Tiana, you're 25, aren't you? How long do you plan to rely on your parents? Why not start managing your own life? A colleague's daughter said she's been independent and working for a major company since she was 20, and she does her own chores. What about you? You're five years older, yet still have your mother make sandwiches and leave the laundry and ironing to me. Aren't you embarrassed? When I was 20, I was working and managing my own affairs. Unleashing my pent-up frustrations, Tiana responded with a loud, Huh? How dare you compare your daughter to someone else's child? You should be grateful you can take care of your precious daughter. To imply I'm at fault with the way you speak, I think that's wrong. That's right, Lindsay. Tiana is at a critical age, 
and she's busy with work. Supporting each other is what being a family is about. But you're just focused on yourself. Aren't you ashamed? Their rebuttals only fueled my anger. Do they even understand the meaning of their words? I looked at them with disdain for their unbelievable statements. Ashamed, you say? What about you? Aren't you embarrassed that your daughter has grown up to be such a lazy and worthless woman? It's because you've coddled her like this that she can't do anything. Derek seemed angered by my response, glaring at me with bloodshot eyes, ready to confront me. What did you say to your husband? Whatever, dad. We're better off without this twisted, old-fashioned woman in our house. Just looking at her stresses me out. Hit with the truth, Tiana cut off Derek's words and sighed in exasperation. Realizing I was finally free from them, I smiled, relieved, and silently celebrated with a fist pump. Thus, I successfully moved out of Derek's house. I moved into an apartment near my workplace, introduced by Jameson, my boss. I had consulted with Jameson about my family situation beforehand, and he suggested I live in the apartment. It was owned by Dahlia, Jameson's wife, and her family, and they had a vacancy at the time. I hesitated for a moment because, honestly, living alone was daunting. Having someone nearby would be best. Jameson and his family offered protection against anything Derek and Tiana might say, allowing me to live there. Lindsay always contributes so much. We help each other out in times of need. If anything happens, just let us know, okay? You can use Jameson as your bodyguard. I agonized over telling them about my home situation. I worried about getting them involved in my troubles with Derek and Tiana or being judged for my feelings towards Frederick. Amidst my fears and concerns, Dahlia was the one who alleviated them. We've both noticed how you've been working as if driven by something. There must be a reason for it, right? Neither Jameson nor I would ever trample on your feelings. I worry about you like family. So, if you're in trouble, don't hesitate to rely on us. I want to support you for a long time. Moved by Dahlia's kind and warm words, I couldn't hold back my tears anymore and shared everything I hadn't been able to say. After hearing my story, Dahlia hugged me, and Jameson crossed his arms with a stern look. If you're okay with it, I can talk to Derek for you. He offered. Dahlia said. You can always run away to our place. Taking care of my living situation. With their support, I successfully moved out. After leaving, I hardly responded to Derek and Tiana's attempts to contact me. They probably wanted to persuade me to return, but living with them again was the last thing I wanted. I explained the situation to Frederick, letting him know about the separation. If it came to divorce, I might get a share of the assets, possibly some of Derek's savings. However, he was very sensitive about money. Despite the separation, the agreement to pay for Derek's household expenses remained unchanged, and it was unlikely Derek would initiate a divorce. They thought everything was fine as long as I could live independently as before. But my plan didn't end there. Five years later, Derek suddenly called. Feeling uneasy, I hesitated to answer at first. But, following someone's advice, I decided to respond. Tiana is getting married. Come to the wedding. I was surprised to hear over the phone that Tiana was having a shotgun marriage. Her partner owned several companies and was wealthy. They wanted to capture her in a beautiful wedding dress before her pregnancy showed too much, so they hastily arranged the wedding. The date was set for a week later. The wedding was to be a grand affair. Okay. Initially unsure about attending, Frederick happened to visit me, and he persuaded me through written notes to go. I'll explain the reason later. Reading his note, I informed Derek of my decision to attend. Derek, satisfied with my response, abruptly ended the call without hearing the rest. What's going on, Frederick? How did you know about Tiana's marriage? After making sure the call had ended, I turned to Frederick to press for details. Just minutes before Derek's call, Frederick had already informed me about the wedding. However, since leaving home, Frederick hadn't had any contact with Tiana or Derek. So, how did he know about Tiana's marriage before me? As I looked at him confused, Frederick began to speak seriously. Mom, will you help me with what I'm about to do? And so, I was shocked by what Frederick told me. On the wedding day, a week later, I was dressed up, 
waiting for Frederick's arrival at the venue. Long time no see, but you still lack any charm, or how should I put it? You've really taken on the look of an old lady, in body and face. It wasn't Frederick who appeared, but Derek in a suit. He seemed to be showing off, wearing brand accessories he usually didn't, and his suit looked expensive, as if it was newly purchased. Well, compared to your usual sloppy look, this is somewhat better. I was worried how it would look, the mother of the bride being so unfashionable at her own daughter's wedding. He was still the same man, saying unnecessary things. Being married to such a person was embarrassing beyond words. Feeling disgusted by his tasteless remarks, Frederick arrived, standing protectively between Derek and me. It's been a while, Dad. Frederick, trying not to arouse suspicion, smiled warmly at Derek. Without any doubt about his demeanor, Derek engaged in light conversation with Frederick. It's been a while since we met. How about a drink together? Thanks. I have some people to greet, so let's drink later. I have a lot to talk about. I didn't miss the sly smile on Frederick's face. Unaware of Frederick's expression, Derek led us into the venue. Our seats are over there. Let's go. As we entered the venue and the ceremony was about to start, Derek urged me to sit down. However, for some reason, I headed towards the groom's side seats. Noticing this, Derek hastily grabbed my wrist to stop me. Where do you think you're going? Our seats are over there. Don't embarrass me. What are you talking about? I shook off Derek's hand, glaring at him. As I did, an angry Derek glared back at me. Ah, there you are. Lindsay, over here, this way. What? What? Surprisingly, Jameson and Dahlia, sitting on the bride's side, noticed me and called me over, pulling me away from Derek. Derek, unable to grasp the situation, stood agape in confusion. Tiana, who had been watching from the sidelines, also seemed surprised and hastily came over to my seat to explain the situation. Um, that person is my mother, and I think she's supposed to sit on the bride's side. The appearance of Tiana in her wedding dress caused a stir in the venue. Everyone's gaze turned our way, wondering what had happened. Lindsay is supposed to sit on the groom's side. After all, I was the one who invited her. Craig, the groom, who had been watching from the sidelines, emerged and dropped this surprising comment to Tiana. Confused, Tiana and Derek looked bewilderedly between Craig and Dahlia. The guests, also confused by the situation, exchanged puzzled looks, wondering what was going on. How do you know Lindsay? And why is she on the groom's side? It's only natural you wouldn't know. The person you were planning to marry is my son, and Lindsay works at my company. What? What? Derek and Tiana were shocked by this unexpected turn of events. It turned out that Tiana's fiancé, Craig, was Jameson's son and the president of Frederick's workplace. After graduating from high school, Craig had left home, taught himself about stocks, and acquired the skills to run a company. Frederick admired Craig and joined his company. Initially unaware, I worked with Jameson's family, and it was revealed that Craig's childhood friend and Frederick's girlfriend, Jennifer, were the same person. Upon hearing Craig was getting married, Frederick contacted me after learning who the bride was. I then explained the situation to Jameson's family, leading to the current arrangement. When Frederick told me, I was shocked. To think Frederick's dear friend was marrying someone as vile as you. At that moment, murmurs spread, and people began whispering Tiana's misdeeds. Tiana started to retort but stopped, likely because Craig was there. She hastily covered her mouth, forcing a strange smile and speaking as politely as she could to me. Mom, please stop making such bad jokes here. It makes everyone uneasy. That's right, Lindsay. There's a time and place for everything. Derek attempted to retort with a forced smile, but Frederick stood protectively in front of me. Frederick looked down on Derek with a resolute stance, making Derek, who was intimidated by Frederick's height, step back. Then, were the words you've always said to me considered appropriate? As I signaled to a staff member, the lights in the venue dimmed, and a video started playing on the screen. The next moment, Derek and Tiana's faces drained of color as the venue buzzed. The video showed scenes of me being harassed and mistreated by Derek and Tiana during our time together. What is that? Isn't that bad? The president's wife, is she really like that? 
Is the president okay marrying that kind of woman? That's not good, right? The room quickly filled with criticism towards Tiana and concern for Craig. Derek yelled at the staff to stop the video, while Tiana, visibly shaken, covered her mouth with her hands, trembling. What do you mean by this? Are you trying to ruin Tiana's happiness? Ruin her happiness? Hearing those words, Frederick angrily retorted. How can you say that when you've never cared about mom's happiness? Huh? Ah. Frederick is usually mild-mannered and kind. He rarely gets angry, usually brushing off unpleasant situations with a laugh, showing great tolerance. But this time involved his mother and a respected company president who is also a dear friend. Two people important to Frederick were being hurt by Derek and his actions. Unable to contain his anger, Derek collapsed in a pathetic heap, trembling with fear under Frederick's intimidation. Regaining her composure, Tiana must have thought it necessary to break the tension. She weakly clung to Craig, pleading, Indeed, I was a lazy daughter until mom left. But I've changed since discovering I was pregnant. I've learned the importance of caring for others. I've resolved to cherish you and our baby. So, can you trust me? As the father of this child, you're prepared to raise it together, right? Realizing there was no escaping the evidence presented in the video, Tiana adopted a repentant stance, looking up at Craig with moist eyes. She wasn't unattractive. She truly believed her tears could sway the situation. However, her last words were a little bit out of line. Frederick, as if he had been waiting for this, approached Tiana with a sly smile. All that talk of changing your heart is useless. Unless you can show proof that the child's father is him, no one will believe your words. What? What are you talking about? The tears in Tiana's eyes vanished instantly, replaced by a cold gaze directed at Frederick. Seeing this, Frederick loudly shared the situation, cornering Tiana. Well, you see, I heard from Craig about how you two met and the likely date you got pregnant. But there's something odd. Craig is sterile. What? The venue erupted in shock upon hearing this revelation. Tiana, caught off guard by Frederick's statement, was visibly shocked. I was surprised when Craig consulted me about his sterility. Could Craig, who hasn't undergone surgery or treatment, possibly father a child? We researched it thoroughly, but it just wasn't possible. Even after retesting, the results were the same. We figured you must be plotting something, and when we found out it was you, we couldn't help but laugh. You must have concocted a lie, aiming for the president's wealth, trying to deceive Craig. Caught in her scheme, Tiana panicked as everyone in the venue looked at her and Derek with disdain. By the way, we've also figured out who the father of your child is. Imagine having an affair with an employee of your own company. If it turns out you're pregnant with a married man's child, that's going to be quite the scandal. Turns out, I'm good friends with the executive vice president of your company. We even go out for drinks. He knows Craig and is here today. You thought you could trick him into marrying you by playing this game? Too bad, you should have done your homework better. That's why you got caught like this. Faced with an undeniable disadvantage, Tiana looked down in frustration, and Derek's face turned pale. There was no escaping the situation now. You really fooled me. Th. That's not. I mean, any more excuses you make now will just make you look pathetic. I rebuked Tiana as she desperately tried to salvage the situation. Do you understand why Jameson and Craig went through with this wedding, despite knowing everything? What? No way! Hearing my words, Derek, unlike the confused Tiana, looked at me in shock, having guessed the truth. Yes. It was all to take revenge on you two for everything you've done, planned by me with everyone's help. What? Craig and Frederick had realized Tiana's lies early on. But Frederick pleaded with Craig not to cancel the wedding. Frederick knew. He knew about the terrible harassment I suffered from Derek. And that I could not divorce Derek because of him. He had acted knowing all this. I found it by accident when you were sleeping. The diary you started keeping the day I left. Frederick, who had come to my new home as a surprise, stumbled upon my diary and learned the whole story. 
he immediately worked hard to lessen my burden, even telling his girlfriend, Jennifer, about it, and convinced her to move in together. But when Craig consulted him about this matter, Frederick saw it as an opportunity for revenge. With Tiana's company's executive also present, his discovery of her downfall led him to glare at her and report to the president immediately. After hearing the details from Frederick, the man involved was subject to a company meeting. Tiana, once a candidate for the next section chief, would now face social sanctions due to this incident and her misconduct. Realizing everything, Derek and Tiana were utterly disheartened and collapsed on the spot. To them, I further stated, This isn't the end of everything. The real hell starts now. Be prepared. Thus, I successfully exacted long-awaited revenge with Frederick, and Tiana's marriage completely fell apart. I thought the guests would be troubled, but they laughed, saying it was entertaining to watch, and no one blamed us for the incident. Following the event, Tiana could no longer stay at her company and was dismissed along with her affair partner. As for Derek, rumors spread, and he was despised by neighbors and colleagues alike. Unable to live decently, he was rumored to have fled the town. Seizing Derek's departure as an opportunity, I presented him with divorce demands. Knowing he would object, I hired a lawyer and submitted the video shown at the venue and other evidence confirming Tiana's harassment towards me. We took the case to divorce mediation and won the trial. I received $10,000 in compensation for the emotional distress suffered throughout the marriage. Thus, peace returned to my life. I continue to work at Jameson's company. Frederick offered to live together after this ordeal, but as much as I appreciated it, I declined. You might start your own family, Frederick, and I have people who care about me like family around. So, I'll be fine. You focus on living your life, with Jennifer by your side, okay? Smiling at Jennifer and Frederick, they shyly smiled back. I will keep working with Jameson, moving forward for my own happiness this time.